Normally, meditation starts with a practice. And then we discover self by knowledge. So I have been saying knowledge practice. Knowledge is not a practice. I look at you, I know you. What is the practice? Pay attention. It's a, one of the highest principle of mindfulness and meditation. When you do practice, there is a doer in you. Means there is a I am in you. And that I am in you is making some effort on the body, on the mind, on the thoughts, on something, they are known as the steps of meditation. So when we practice that I am is always there, the doer is always there. Whatever master says, as long as the doer is there, that I am is there in the intellect, you don't reach to the highest state of mindfulness or meditation. So that is why I gave today's topic that you start with a practice and you discover the self by knowledge. Why I say, in any mindfulness and meditation, we, knowledge of the reality is revealed. Knowledge of the self is revealed. So not by practice, but then why we do practice? Because we are not qualified seeker. Until we become a qualified seeker, we have to do the practice. But the moment we are qualified, now knowledge. Take one simple example. We start learning driving. Driver teacher comes. He gives us the lessons and we need to practice. See that practice comes. Now, you pass the examination, written and practical. You have a driving license. Means what? Oh, can you drive me there? Yes, I can drive you. So you keep that driving license in your wallet and you drive me to the destination. So it is because of the knowledge you already have. Understand again that why we say this, that the mindfulness or meditation is an effortless natural practice goes beyond the so-called practice. It is not a practice. Very good. In order to understand that, make a pair, knowledge, Ignorance and knowledge, and action in action. Now pair them. Knowledge is opposite of ignorance. So every teacher says of the Eastern wisdom that we live in ignorance, incomplete knowledge about myself, and that is why I'm suffering. Now put knowledge against action or put no ignorance against action. Can by action, can we remove that ignorance? The answer is no. The action, opposite of action is inaction. Karma, no karma. Ignorance, opposite is knowledge. 
So normally what happens that our mind due to the wrong notion they create an a pair which is not applicable. They make a pair Oh, I have a lot of problem in the mind. I am suffering. What should I do? What should I do? It means action. And every teacher in the Eastern wisdom, they start talking of the principles of the Eastern wisdom. Kindly sit, understand. I was giving you an example of this young boy. I said, come, please sit. You have, your mind is totally reactive against your mother. So you want to say yes to mother and you want to say no to the mother. By which practice you can remove yes and no? No practice. It is by understanding that your mind is reacting against your mother, first thing, to remove that reaction, to remove that anxiety, to remove that duality, and then sit down calmly to take a right decision. So we create a wrong notion that meditation and mindfulness is a practice, and you continue to keep those wrong notion moving in your mind, Nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. That is why every master starts talking about it. They talk of the principle. Come on, understand. Ignorance is opposite of knowledge. So if we, if we awaken to the knowledge of the reality, the ignorance that is causing the suffering will come to an end. And, but my mind is not yet qualified. My mind is wandering. It has a likes and dislikes. Likes and dislikes causes attachment and detachment. A constant thinking of attachment and detachment, what happens, creates a circle of my habit, of my habit, of my attitude. So what happens? Sometimes I'm always running. I ask you to close your eyes. You close your eyes, but your mind is running. It is the running mind is because of that ignorance. So first we have to qualify to become a seeker. And it happens in every facet of life and we don't realize that. We simply say close your eyes, sit, look at the breath and that becomes the meditation. The answer is no. So we return again. First karma should be done. We should do practice to qualify to practice, qualify to, to do meditation. So I'm using a wrong phrase, to do meditation. So now you are qualified, you understand it. So once you are a qualified seeker, then the knowledge should be there. That knowledge should be awakened. In knowledge, there is no doer. There is no I am. See that. In karma, when you do anything, who does I am doing? So the intellect says there is one I-ness, the doership is there, and doership on something. One of the most beautiful principle our master speaks that karma has an inherent defect. Inherent defect. 
I am doing, I am doing this step. I like this step. I love this step. I dislike this step. I don't like this step. No, I, uh, my mind reacted. Uh, the moment there is a doership, the mind returns with the likes and dislikes, pleasure and pain, sorrow and happiness. But in knowledge, we don't have this uh, duality. This doership is not there. I am is not there. So in the knowledge, your 100% awareness is there on the real self. So that is why we say meditation reveals the knowledge of the reality, the knowledge of the self. And the moment that knowledge of the self is revealed, what happens? It brings an end to the suffering. Knowledge is like a light. And karma, doing something is like a darkness. So ultimately in any meditation, we reach to a state of doing nothing. That is why you see that I always adhere to the principles taught by these masters. In the end, I say, be in the state of doing nothing. Why? Even if I do nothing, the existence is always present. Whether I live or die, existence is always there. In the same state of peace and calmness and happiness and love and wisdom. So let us start our today's meditation focusing on the, these principles that we have discussed.